Hi, Alex. Hello, Janet. How are you? I am good. Still <laughs> happy. Still happy. <laughs> healthy and happy. That's the most important, right? Healthy, happy, and uh, still can can smell, still can taste. <laughs> yes, I think that's crucial right now. So I think before we went live, you mentioned a little about uh, the activities they are doing from a voluntary perspective. Maybe you can share a little bit more about what you're doing uh, in terms of uh, the voluntary work in Myanmar. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'm a volunteer in some association like uh, Myanmar Young Entrepreneurs, uh, Myanmar Business Executive Association, etc. So these are specially designed for that. Uh, we try to support uh, small and medium enterprises. So basically for the economic development of these SMEs. Mm. So we are consulting, we are training, and we give some guidelines to them. But uh, since uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, crisis died, uh, there is a one new volunteer team uh, developed in, in Yango. We call that uh, We Love Yango. So We Love Yango is a, it's a kind of a, uh, it's a combination of all volunteer association in one group. But because previously there are a lot of uh, volunteer groups uh, they do for the environmental they do for the road traffic they do for the for the cleaning etc etc but now they combine in one umbrella that's called we love yango so that uh, one of the one of the famous leader in this volunteering uh, this lady uh, lead that team so the purpose is uh, because of this COVID-19, all the business are shutting down and, and you know, uh, one, the government announced for the lockdown situations, nobody can walk and there will be a problem for the, especially for food. So we care for the, what we call poor people, uh, try to, well, we try to distribute, some we donate, some we sell. Uh, but very, very reasonable price for them. I think that our audience has already come, some have already started to come in. We will basically start playing the episode. So before okay. uh, I begin and brief on what will happen during the episode, let's uh, introduce uh, Alex here. Uh, welcome, Alex, and thank you for spending your time to share your experience and insights with us. Yeah. So now... Today, uh, we have, uh, oh, we have Philip, Dr. Philip Mary here, and uh, uh, he's hello, saying, Philip. hello, <laughs> Dr. Dr. Philip told me that he wanted to ensure that he's on this session to watch you as well. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So I'm, I'm applying his uh, Belbin team role very well, and I'm coming uh, Sunday. Uh, I will try to this, we left Yangon volunteer team, uh, how the team role is uh, do, is working. So this is my contribution to the team. It's about around more than 200 volunteers in this association now. Wow. Nobody go back. All are, all are uh, self-quarantined in there. This is like a camping, you know? Mm. So nobody goes back because uh, they, they never go back their home. Almost more than one month, they stay wow. and do volunteer here. Right. Right. So now let me just go ahead and introduce Alex for the episode. Uh, today we have Alex uh, Kwan Yen Soil from Myanmar. So after 18 years in the corporate MNC, Alex founded Kudos to You Professional Development Academy. Uh, he has 10 years of experience as a management trainer and business consultant and is also very active, like we, he or, uh, already mentioned, where he's contributing actively back in Myanmar to the Myanmar Entrepreneurs Association, uh, Myanmar Business Executive Association, Myanmar Professional Speakers Association, that's where we met. And uh, also he talked a lot about uh, Yangon, we love you earlier on. Yeah, so welcome Alex uh, and thank you for your time again. So now, um, Alex, maybe you can share, I think um, when we first did the interview, that was almost more than a month ago. Um, at that time, you told me that Yangon uh, or Myanmar was actually going to be locked down and training had, will be stopped. How's the situation of COVID-19 at the moment 
in Myanmar? Uh, actually, uh, I would say that uh, our government, uh, they really care on this crisis and they can manage uh, quite well. That, that's my personal point of view because nowadays you are aware that uh, there are only 161 uh, positive where uh, I mean in the in the hospitals so and five or six were passed away but they, they also have a somewhere very aged aged people so they all they also have a, some other diseases already and so this positive effect and more than 20, I think, they already negative and recover again. So, uh, what in uh, especially uh, in Yangon and other areas, uh, the regional government they manage themselves. Uh, if necessary, they lock down the the cities, they lock down the regions, and 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 it's now even nowadays there is uh, still today there is no like like, like bus transportation. Right. And airline, they just start local airline. They just started uh, last two days ago, I think. To so stop all travels as well. Everything stopped. So officially, government announces until May fifteenth. So the announcement is still. So they will announce it again, maybe on fourteen night. What will be again? But yeah. until fifteen, only uh, like like supermarket for the foods and other necessary products, drug stores, they are allowed to open. But for the rest, not yet. Uh, even for the factories, uh, th there is a committee that they go around and check whether these factories are set up for this, uh, this, uh, this uh, social distancing and other necessary health and safety factors. So, the, so af after this uh, check, uh, board members approve, the factories can open again, can <laughs> operate again. I see. So it's very similar to Singapore. Singapore is actually till the 1st of June uh, and including even home-based um, business like bakeries and uh, because I also sell items actually on online e-commerce stores like Lazada, basically because the retail outlet is closed. So we have to basically ship from whatever stock that we have at home unless you have a warehouse. So that also stopped and will probably resume also after the 15th, no, 12th of May uh, actually. Yeah. So we are about yeah. one minute down uh, to 2 p.m. So let me just go through the schedule of what will happen today. So for today, basically uh, 150, we started actually welcoming and chit-chatting for a little while at 2 p.m. Basically, that's when the episode, sorry for the typo, it's actually episode five right now in terms of the premiere. And uh, at 2.10 p.m., we will have the live chat uh, and questions from the guests. So uh, while we're watching the video, please do remember to actually key in your question on the right-hand side. We're hitting 2 p.m. right now. So I shall uh, take you off for a little while, um, Alex, and then I'll put on the video. Why or what led to the crisis you had in your personal or organizational situation? The crisis means that change the situation from one situation to the another. In my life, I got a one big changes. That is, I changed from my employee life to self-employed life. 
that's a, one of the big prizes, I would say that, because everybody prepared something for the exchange. But for me, I decided very quickly, without much preparation, uh, just from my, I would say, gut feeling, uh, and I, I can protect and all that. That's all. What was the business that you originally started seven years ago? I planned it for business consultants and training, and mm. also I do as a freelance trainer. Mm. But the crisis is internal and external. Internal, my wife, my family, they worry for me. And not only they worry for me, they worry for that as well. That's the issue is I, uh, at the time, the salary that I'm getting in a company is quite a high one. I mean, even in Denmark, one of the top three companies. So my wife was really, really surprised. And the next one is, I expected that uh, I got a lot of uh, customer contacts. These are my potential customers if I do this and customer service training. So when I quit, I informed to them, I told to them, hey, I quit already. And I have been a freelance trainer for a long at the time, four or five years training experience in every weekend. So I, I explained them and I proposed them, hey, I can do this and that. But most of them don't believe me didn't believe. Even though when I called to them, them never pick up. So that's one of the very bad feelings for me. Because when I was in company, everybody is calling me. They are looking for the opportunity for me. But now, nobody wants to pick up my call. You're still a business consultant and management consultant now. So what were the steps that you took that actually turned this in your business or personal practice The very first thing is uh, patient. I don't show my overall feeling. Also, I analyze it secondly. So, what is happening? What are my weaknesses? It's a very simple thing that I do sort of analysis mm. for my business. If you are patient and if you're really calm down, and if you analyze it on the, if you can see the real situation, if you can find out the real opportunity in that kind of crisis, go for it. And one more thing, if I never stop planning, continuous planning. You mentioned earlier on when you meet up with your previous customers, they were not willing to actually give you the business. You might be doing SWOT analysis and looking at where are your weaknesses. How do you then overcome the trust that they have in you in order for them to be willing to give you business? Or did you actually go out of that circle and, and got your business somewhere else? As I said, not, not every customer issue that we have had. Mm -hmm. Make like a reference to what our holder said. Mm -hmm. Everything is on you. Know yourself. I do so an analysis. Mm. Everything is on me and I have to know myself. I know then what I can do. I can be my potential customer who can trust to me and what kind of strategies shall I do. So I, at the time I prepare a lot. Even when I wake up in the middle of the night, get up from bed and as soon as I got the idea, go to my, my text and I prepare all the things. Secondly, mine is everything what you can do. That's another other thing. So I never think about my past. I have to bring for the future of that. I focus on my present situation. There is a many and from uh, around 2008, I think when I was walking in Singapore, uh, one of the Chinese was, uh, they pronounce that way, G-A-G is like a like in Chinese. So way is in nature and G is a... A opportunity. That, that, that's my belief. Know that uh, even though I got a crisis, I have an opportunity. So I just you to think where is my opportunity and how can I apply my strength? If you have to give three tips on what you have learned over the crisis, or for someone who is currently going through crisis, probably either they are like yourself, they decided to quit their job and mm. then they start their own business or probably in this kind of climate where they are forced out of employment. What would be the three key mm. tips you will give to them to move forward? The thing is, you need to be calm down. But calm down. Don't worry. And yeah, the time up, please calm down. Calm down, take your time. Then, second, analyze it. Analyzing the very simple thing. Analysis. And use it. This is a very 
bless you. And if he makes you, he comes out in the light, focus on that gap. The gap means that the opportunity can happen one, the third one. I feel that that's positive attitude. If you don't have a positive attitude, it's really overcome on whatever the Christ is. But at times, right? Especially like you mentioned earlier on, when you are stuck between your family and trying to bring an income back, like you said, no regular yeah. income, it may not be easy to stay positive. How do you make sure that you stay positive? What do you do? For example, like when I deal with my wife, I always say that I believe myself. Just give me a time. And we negotiate this time, but I do like that. Just give me six months of It's different. If I can reach what I want, I will go back to the employment. I just try to, to realize so, why it's I, did it. <laughs> I did it. Say opposite to hard work. I have another positive attitude. Even though my friends, my customers, who are not weak, I never stay away from them. I always keep in touch with them. And I use the media, so I use Facebook. I contact with them. Whatever I finish my training, I post it. I try to to write that the content in the Facebook more attractively, positively, fun. So I built my profile in Facebook strategically, and then be, and people become willing to talk and deal with me. Hi, Alex. Welcome back. Hello. Yeah. So, uh, how 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 does it feel watching yourself being interviewed? That was more than a month ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, now, uh, less stressful. <laughs> Sorry. Less stressful. Uh, I mean, less stress, less stress now because at that time a little bit stress. I feel because uh, because another crisis is coming. You know. Um, but for me now, I think you, as I said in in this interview, uh, interview because uh, I, it means that I can I can make uh, remind myself and I okay I now now the, the another crisis is coming again so what I have to do since our interview finished uh, I prepare a lot I think a lot and I make some strategies. For this next chapter, I see. So I really, I really appreciate and and thank you for this interview. It it it, it makes me really uh, more con more easy for me to do to, to rethink myself. Yeah. Great. No, no, thank thanks a lot. So actually, I have a follow up question, but we'll first take a question from Doctor Philip Mary. He's asking, okay, are there um, personalities that are better at handling crisis? And what was it about your personality that helped you manage this crisis? Yeah, that's the, that's a very uh, good question. Um, yes, it's really important in in the crisis period uh, your personality because uh, I see that some you know some people uh, what what I notice in my in my uh, environment some they worry a lot. They they do not want to go out. Some they want to blame the government. So it means that uh, most of the if you are on negative uh, negative think of thinking point of view, it's really hard to uh, you know overcome that kind of situation because we never see or we never suffer that kind of crisis before. And and I always say that there is no case study in the in the management books not in mba so this is a very new case study so so we have to change ourselves so the thing is for me uh, if you ask about my personality as i said i am a very uh, i would say that i always approach with a 
optimistic point of view. I noticed one short video from uh, Simon Sinek in Mankin when the crisis started. What he said is the difference between a uh, positive and optimistic point of view. So, uh, you know, sometimes optimistic and positive thinking is quite similar. But the way that he explained to me is, uh, is, is I got some, some uh, what we call, uh, breakthrough ideas. Because what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm thinking is I have to approach from the opti optimistic point of view. So it means that I will try to find out what will happen after COVID and what I, what I could survive. How can I survive during COVID? So these are the two points. So survival, for the survival thing, I have to prepare a lot of, uh, I have to do a lot of things. Uh, for example, like for my health, uh, uh, how to, how to spend my time in my, in my, a lot of, uh, free time. So these are the things for the survival. And also some preparation and, and strategic thinking for after the COVID. So these are the, these are the things that I have to do optimistically. So I will say that, uh, that's optimistic is the one of the, uh, personality to manage in this crisis. That's my favorite one. Right. So, Oops. okay. Now, then the question, follow up question that I'd like to ask you would be, I think in the video you mentioned about SWOT analysis, um, looking at your strengths and weaknesses and what are the opportunities before you decide on your next steps. So I'm curious to know right now, um, after the strategy thinking and planning, how are you uh, preparing your business, your team members to tap on whatever that will come after COVID-19? Okay. As I said before, after we made an interview, I make such analysis for myself. So current situation is I cannot go up. But the strength is we have a what we call this internet situation. We can we 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 can communicate with the whole world. So and in the we can also say that's the opportunity for us. So I have a lot of friends. I have a lot of networks. So I try to talk. I never say isolate again. So the very first step is I try to uh, by such analysis. My friend is very good network. A lot of uh, friends from the in, uh, from the business industry. So I made a plan. I appoint with them and I made a lot of interviews like you. So every morning and every evening, uh, I called them, I chit chat them. Uh, until today, I made a total 32 episodes, business interviews. These interviews are around 30 minutes to one hour and on, also on different business industries various industries we talk a lot a lot a lot so after after that one i i got a i got more idea what i can go make uh how i can go to the next step what are the needs from the business industry because i'm a trainer so i am very sure the next two three four months there will there will be very difficult to make uh, this physical training Government will not allow, and nobody dares to come. And even the the very bad business, even the the, the corporate organization, they will not uh, pay for this. So, what I think is, what I can do, because I'm doing, I'm doing, uh, you know, uh, what we call, uh, uh, what we, uh, business consultation for almost ten years. So, I have to, I have to change the strategy a bit. Less training, more business consultation. If I want to do more business consultation, I need to understand what is happening now. So that's the reason that I communicate with the, my friends, all business industry, talk a lot, 
I get a lot of free content uh, hours to my clients. I, I announce in the Facebook. So every day I accept three customers, morning, afternoon, evening, free one hour talk. Whether they are small or micro or medium, I don't care. I, I give all of them I, these three hours. I talk and, and, I, and I try to catch up and understand what is happening. So now, when the situation is a little bit calmed down, the business can. Some, they offer me, oh, please help me. Can you consult my business on how we can develop, how we can manage the... I also use this Fairbeing team rules. I think I made it... Uh, Four or five times online, uh, building team role, uh, coaching and, and, and free training. So I, I ask them if everybody can drive. I'm, uh, so, so because, so that, that's because, because of this crisis, all the business, they have to be reorganized again. So they have to understand how they can and, and make a very, uh, what we call effective, how can build their effective team. So that, that's, that's how I would say that I will contribute to my society. So because of this, because of I using trends, now uh, a little bit calm down and less stress. Uh, so can continue some some business now. So that's, that's that's how I apply this SWOT and my my three tips. Great, thanks. I think you also touch a little bit on the next question. We have a next question from uh, Dr. Eric Leros who asks. Would you recommend exploring new endeavors or developing new skills after the crisis? What can you suggest, especially in ASEAN? I think uh, that's the, uh, I have to say uh, ASEAN and Myanmar are a bit different. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, because uh, so for Myanmar, for, uh, let me let me answer for Myanmar first. From, from Myanmar, I, I suggest, because Myanmar, it's, we, we're still, behind, still far behind with, uh, with the ASEAN. So I, I urge my, my Myanmar people to, to learn more about internet, try to learn about English, and also about uh, how, how they can do this uh, digital business. So that, because Myanmar, we need that kind of thing. Uh, for ASEAN, I, my feeling is uh, analytical skills. We need it. New skills, uh, I'm not sure whether they have that because uh, the situation has changed already. Uh, and also, uh, how shall I say, um, uh, a little bit difficult for me in English. It's, it's about your mindset. How to control your your emotion? I would say that emotional skill. I will say again, EQ skill. If, if I have to say, because this pandemic is is not by individual, not by country. It's concerned with the whole world, ASEAN. So what we have to do is, if you want to overcome this crisis, you have to build up your EQ skill. I think IQ skill is not really walk in this situation. So I will suggest, please develop your EQ first. That's very important. Right. So now, Dr. Philip Mary says, uh, it sounds like you, a practical optimist, and you have a very detailed and practical style as well as just optimism. Uh, for everything that you do. So similar, like I said, I think I, I interviewed you as one of the earliest interviewee and um, you have done even more videos that I have done. I'm still halfway through editing and you have really done 32 episodes and uploaded it. So really, really <laughs> fast, impressive. <laughs> yeah. So now uh, the other thing um, before we wait for some more questions to see whether there are questions, let me just share um, about how you can watch the episodes and maybe contact uh, Alex a uh, little later. So Alex, I'm just going to hide you for a little while. So this is actually the uh, episode where basically Alex has been interviewed, which has his background. Uh, currently, there's actually a video, a clearer version 
of it um, based on what I streamed previously. And then uh, later on after this episode, I'll put in the button um, for you to watch with the live Q&A as well. So this is actually on the Effective Asian Leadership page on leadership during crisis. I'll put it into the link so that you know where to get it from. Um, and if you need to contact and understand what Alex is doing uh, in Myanmar or in whatever situation you are close to, you can contact Alex over at the kudos to you mm.com show now. Let me just bring Alex back right now. Hi, Alex. Hi. Yeah, okay. I have another comment from Jennifer. She says she agrees EQ is almost always triumphing uh, IQ. Mentally tough people can usually outlast any crisis. But as a follow-up question, um, Alex, maybe I would like to ask you would be was like, different personality systems um they will have different people i'm not so well versed with belbin but from the perspective of asian personality profiling there are people who are more towards the thinker types the ana an, uh, ana analysis types who may who may have extremely good iq but generally they know that they need to develop eq but they, it's not in it inert in them that means it's not part of your natural personality to do it for people like that, how do you, what would be your advice or tip to help them uh, up their EQ skills? Uh, for, for example, like uh, the most situation is you have to understand yourself. This is what Belbin said. According to the Belbin uh, team role theory, what we need is uh, how we are contributing, communicating, and interrelating together with others in our workplace. So workplace means that in my business or in my volunteer association or in my at my home, whatever it is, wherever you are dealing with other people, you have to understand yourself, how you can contribute to them, how you can communicate or interrelate with them. That's what the Bavin says. So as for me, According to the Belbin personality type, I'm a team worker role, we call that. Uh, team workers are very uh, optimistic, uh, very perceptive, uh, what we call very listen, uh, very good listening skills. We avoid friction, and that's a kind of, uh, that's my one of the strong points. And another one is uh, RI, we call that, uh, resource investigator. A resource investigator means uh, we are happy to deal with outside points. We are always looking for the opportunity. So these are the two strong personalities of mine. I also see myself and also my friends, my community also see like that. So when I understand myself, I apply these personalities there. For example, I uh, for example I am not a good uh, completer finisher. We call that in Belgium. So completer finisher is very perfect guy, very detailed guy, very quality guy, and he's very uh, I mean uh, always worry and you know, do something uh, again and again and again until it's perfect. I'm not like that guy. I'm I'm not so patient. So I know myself. So I I don't involve in that kind of thing. So. Even for, for that kind of example, if we talk about EQ, if you know yourself, if you understand yourself, and you can apply or you can contribute your strength, that's a good EQ. And you don't involve in your weak area. So no, nobody will be uh, being uh, complainer for this. And you can deal very well, you can work well with others. That's what I see. Right. So, uh, okay, let me just summarize what you mentioned. I think what you mentioned earlier on was that I think it's critical for us, like you mentioned also in the video, for us to really understand our strengths and work on that instead of focusing on our weakness. 
And then from an EQ perspective, I think um, what you were basically in summary saying was that it's important to really understand things from other people's perspective. And from your point of view is you apply the Belwin team roles so that it's easier for you. Uh, for example, when you say you're not a very good uh, computer and finisher, so you will get someone else to help you in it. So, so thank you for sharing, um, Alex. And we have um, Eric here mentioning again, thank you, um, Alex. Really appreciate the positive insights on how to cope with post-crisis scenario. And I think that's really important because I, the up, aftermath, I think at the beginning when I was doing the interviews, we were really talking about crisis leadership as to everybody, like you mentioned, suddenly thrown into a crisis situation. Right now, I think even though things are getting calmer, I think for the next six months to a year's time to everything, we're not even sure whether it'll be a year's time before things go back to normal, the aftermath of uh, the crisis and how you're going to handle it. So really thank you for sharing what you have done. Um, I think it's good that all of us reflect uh, so that we are better prepared on what can be done. I think we have another comment from um, Dr. Philip Mary. He said, the first quality of high EQ is to be aware of your style. So whichever profile you use, it indicates your EQ. Okay, good answer. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Yeah. So once again, we have one minute left and I'm cognizant of your time because I think you're very busy today doing volunteering work uh, for Yangon with love. Uh, yeah. Alex. So thanks for your time. And um, like I mentioned earlier, uh, if anybody has any questions that you need to, you can actually uh, uh, look for Alex on the leader, uh, Effective Asian Leadership uh, stroke, during, stroke Leadership During Crisis page. Uh, that's where how you can contact him. Um, Alex, do you have any last advice or tip that you'd like to share before we end the session? Uh, actually, uh, as I said, uh, life is very, you know, uh, life is very short. <laughs> life is very short. Uh, so th there is a quote saying that life is very short, but you have feet. Uh, that's one of my favorite questions. So, nobody knows when we will die. So, always, all the things are Go on and go off. So that's only the God knows. So, but for us, we are a human being, and we have to do our best how we can contribute to our society, especially for the globally. So, you you cannot go out. You have, you may need to be homestay, but you can do a lot of things from your home, from your room, from your chair and table with your computer. So do something that is really good for our, for the world, for this crisis especially. So even a tiny little thing is really effective in this kind of situation. People need help. Just a hand to them. It's a heart. Right. That's what and I mean. Thank you, Alex. Uh, we have quite a few thank yous. So before we end, I'll share this on the video. We have uh, Dr. Philip Mary saying thank you. Um, thanks. Uh, yes, I think it's worthwhile doing all these sessions, although it's quite a lot of hard work because I share the same uh, values as um, uh, Alex because I think whatever small thing that we can do uh, one at a time, I think it will help. And we have Jennifer sharing as well uh, of... Um, for, thank you for sharing your experience and your background. Um, the other thing is I'd like to basically pull this up. You can basically go to the Effective Asian Leadership Stroke Leadership During Crisis page in order for you to look, uh, look at the episodes clearer. And then once the live edition is actually edited, it will also be up there. So thank you everyone for taking your time. So see you again the next time. And thanks, thanks again, Alex, for your time. Bye. You're welcome. Bye-bye, everybody. See Stay you. Safe. Yeah, you too. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>